for you guys is special. Guys, I, words can't describe how much I enjoy this motherfucker, and he's a vapor, and we all know how much I dislike those people. And he's the only one that's tolerable. The only fucking one. Brandon Sams means nothing. <laughs> guys, seriously, put your hands together. Give it up. He drove through fucking Arkansas traffic to be here for you tonight. Give it up, Michael fucking Brown. Still don't know who Stanley Justice is. My dog! Oh, it's your dog. That's awesome. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, pro tip, don't drink a whole bottle of Dasani in Fort Smith, Arkansas, when you're coming this away into Memphis and taking the I-40 bridge. I felt like I was about to go into renal failure on my way here. I had to, I had to, as soon as I got into Memphis, this is true, I know. You know what, you know what I decided? I decided I was not gonna do anything prepared tonight. So we'll see what happens. This is what just happened on my way into town. I came in and uh, you know the expression, I had to pee like a Russian racehorse? I don't know what that means, but it may apply to me while I go. I don't know if they, do they tie off Russian racehorses' cocks <laughs> with a tourniquet and keep them from peeing so they'll fucking run faster? I don't know how the, where that expression came from. What is it with Russian horses and their peeing that they have to do it? Okay. So, I pulled, I don't know what building I peed behind near a dumpster, but I'm pretty sure I saw it on 48 Hours a couple of months ago. If CSI goes there, they will totally find my DNA. I hope nothing happens tonight if I'm around that dumpster. Um... Because Memphis is like the Gotham City of the South, apparently. <laughs> you applauded that. <laughs> I mean, St. Louis tries, but they fucking fail. It's you guys, man. You're it. And uh, one of my favorite Memphis memories, actually, from the early 90s, is I used to come here for uh, comic book conventions and shit like that, right? And a good buddy of mine around 1990 had a full head to toe um, replica of Michael Keaton Batman outfit. Woo! Yeah. Fucking awesome. I know, dude. I don't know where this cat went, man. He used to live here, and I, re I really thought he was funny, and I thought he would wind up going into stand up comedy, but apparently he had like goals and ambitions. <laughs> <laughs> but, um,. <laughs> The, uh, the, what is it, the, uh, there's like a, there's like a room where all the pros and shit go to and they mingle with like the, the fanboys and stuff and they have mimosas and shit like that. Uh, it's, it, the, we were in that room, right? And I'm sitting steadily talking to Mike Carlin who was like the head of DC Comics at the Holy time, shit. right? Yeah, yeah. And at the time I was, I weighed about 100 pounds less and he was like, you could totally pass for Rob Liefeld if you had to. And I was like, fuck you, Mike Carlin. So, um, boy, that was a 10%. I didn't figure that would get that much of a laugh, to be honest with you. You guys are my crowd, or at least five of you are. Um, <laughs> My buddy comes in, still in full Batman regalia, and he's, and he's laughing his ass off. I'm like, hey, what, what, what's going on, what happened? He said, he just went on the roof of the Peabody in the Batman outfit. Because he fucking wanted to. <laughs> he wanted to get up on the roof of the Peabody and just look out over Memphis with a fucking cape. <laughs> 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 I was like, hell yeah, man, how was it? He said, it was awesome. I get up there and there's a wedding reception <laughs> with a live band and everything. And like the wedding has already happened and they're dancing and shit and the band, God bless Memphis musicians. Woo! Yes! 
the band without missing a fucking beat. As soon as he walked out, unplanned, mind you, instantly went into the Adam West Batman thing. <laughs> like the fucking saxes were going to shit. It was nuts. He went up there. He wound up dancing with the bride, getting his picture made and shit. He crashed a wedding party before 50, 20 years before they made a fucking movie about it. Unbelievable. Unbefuckingbelievable. That's one of my favorite Memphis memories. One of my not so famous favorite Memphis memories is uh, doing this show. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for coming out. Unbelievable. Uh, can't believe what happened. You know what? Uh, uh, this is supposed to be Don't Be Afraid of the Comedy America. Woo. And I pimped this out on Twitter earlier today as we were going to be the next, this is to you, Josh, we were going to be the next wave of the satiristas that are coming up. Okay? We got to fucking start somewhere. And a, and a back room stage inside a club in Memphis is as good a fucking place as any, honestly. Thank you. Yes. Legends are made in this city. So I, I tweeted that and Satirista has retweeted it, so we got to fucking live up to it now. I want to get subversive on your asses a little bit. Um, holy shit, what the fuck? Uh, Supreme Court just said... <laughs> Uh, some shit about Hobby Lobby that was weird <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> right? Uh, basically said that corpor the corporation, the closely held corporation, as though there's a corporation that you closely hold to yourself. Uh, a closely held corporation and now has, apparently, uh, religious rights. Okay, first, they said the corporations could talk with their money, yeah. right? For, they said they were people. They're people, you guys. They're people, my friend. Corporations are people. So how do the people, we got to be able to, they have to be able to speak. How can they speak? Fucking money. That's how they speak, right? And then, oh, now they've got religion. So they're really embracing this whole corporate people thing, aren't they? If they've got the First Amendment covered, what's the fucking, what's going to stop them from the corporations exercising their Second Amendment rights? <laughs> when are the corporations going to, as a person, going to stand their ground <laughs> against some of the customers that fucking come up and complain about the customers? <laughs> If you work in the service industry, don't fucking tell me you haven't ever daydreamed about being behind the fucking counter when somebody's coming up with a return or a problem or whatever, and they walk up and they start throwing a fit at you, by, and you're like, fucking, I don't know what your problem is, but I do know that there are two twin 50 cal turrets aimed at your head right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When that shit happens, people are going to be a lot more polite at the Walmart. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Unbelievable. When the corporations start exercising their Second Amendment rights, you guys, it's going to be fucking Thunderdome out there. It's going to make Memphis look like a fucking ball pit. It's going to be nothing. Are you shitting me? No. When I was, I was, all right, I'm going to put this in my context for some of the geeks in here, okay? I was watching an old Star Trek original series, Kirk, fucking Shatner Kirk episode. Woo! Yeah, thank you. Uh, not too long back called Return of the Archons. Nice. Return of the Archons is, is inexplicably, this, uh, the, the landing party goes down on this fucking planet and with, they're all dressed in like late 1880s garb, you know, or whatever, because they had the wardrobe was like held over from Bonanza or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all dressed in like Victorian era kind of steampunk, if you have, that helps you. <laughs> steampunk dress, 
and uh, they beam down, and I, I don't remember what the fuck they're beaming down for, other than say, let's beam down here and start some shit. What do you think? Because that's the first episode that the Prime Directive was mentioned. Geek. Okay. <laughs> He's like, don't fuck with the natives. That's the basically that was the that was the whole message of this episode for the Federation people. But they went down, and everybody was nice, and everybody was really even keeled, right? And they would come up to you and ask you, "Are you of the body? Are you one with the body? Landrew is the body. Are you one with Landrew? Or are you one with the body? Now replace Landrew with Walmart." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, because when the Walmarts are going to be able to exercise their Second Amendment rights, basically what's going to happen is as soon as you step on, as soon as you drive on the Walmart parking lot, you are now one with the body. <laughs> Those that work there are one with the body. They are one with the body. That's, that's, they are one, they are a small microbe, a piece, a cog, if you will, and a, a small organ in the overall body of the living thing, the living, breathing consciousness that is the corporation of Walmart, right? And if they can all exercise their Second Amendment rights, they can put you down like fucking white corpuscles put down a fucking uh, <laughs> virus. You understand? You get one, there's not gonna be any kids slapping in Walmart after that shit happens. No, 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 no. Not when every associate is packed with lethal and non-lethal force ready to Keep your shit calm. Because <laughs> you're one with the body now. <laughs> Something I'm playing around with. Um, <laughs> it's really tough to wedge in a Star Trek reference into current <laughs> political humor, but I fucking did it. <laughs> I'm not, I appreciate that. That wasn't fishing for that, but I appreciate that. Um, hey, man. It's all good. We're not holding a meeting. Come on, come on in. <laughs> it's real tentative. Oh, fuck. Coming from the white people. <laughs> I understand, dude. I felt the same way. Because <laughs> white people are causing fucking problems, man. They are. White people are causing fucking problems in this country. I'm the worst kind of person you can be in America right now. I'm a white male. Holy shit. And I'm starting to go gray, which means I'm starting to get a little more gravitas to the shit that I say. Yeah. Otherwise, I would just be a fucking... That would be you. I was you, basically, ten years ago. Yeah. Minus the Jufro, but I was you. <laughs> Now I'm like, I was introduced the other day as a founding father of Little Rock Comedy. Fuck <laughs> all of you. <laughs> How is that possible? I'm not that old. You're the comedy guru, Mike. Tell us how you did it. Well, here's how I did it. I got my mom and dad to pay for my gas for four fucking years. <laughs> well, I went around the country making a hundred bucks a night in fucking shithole places in Pennsylvania. And now I get to call myself a fucking comic. <laughs> it's no, thank you. It's no different than my folks paying for a fucking degree that I would have to do for four years. You know, they're paying for a degree for four years, and then I come out going, well, apparently I'm now a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> no different. Uh, so just do that. Get your parents to pay for your gas until they can't afford it, and then hope that you're funny. It's my advice to all the new comedians. <laughs> it's the way I did it, shit. Um, I'm about to get one thing. That, uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, have a, uh, I have a podcast like every fucking comedian under the sun. And uh, so I get it, if I ever get on stage, I try to pimp it out because I need listeners. Because here's why. I stopped touring, mostly because my folks cut me off. But, <laughs> but also because I had to get some money together and shit because I'm about to get married next year. and Yeah, yeah, thank you. 
Uh, every woman in here should be clapping for her too because she's jumping on that grenade for all of you. <laughs> Honestly, she is taking it on the chin, face, and hair for you. <laughs> she is the Jesus of women. She's getting nailed for your sins. You gotta give it up for her. <laughs> Uh, we're about to uh, uh, go one third of Arkansas uh, rents rents an apartment or rents a house, and apparently, Arkansas is like the last fucking frontier for landlords to be able to fuck you in the ass if you're a renter. Uh, so we're getting the fuck out of the rental world, uh, mostly because I'm finally get uh, I finally get my house back. I got I, I, I thank you. Thank you very much. I've been out of my own house for like 10 years. Uh, my sister, she, this is why I'm pro-choice. She had a kid and that ruined her prospects of being an actress in Hollywood. And so she moved back to Arkansas to teach drama because fucking those who can't do. And um, <laughs> so when she moved back, she had to have a place to fucking live and raise the kids and shit. And so she moved into the house that I was supposed to get, uh, which was my grandmother's house, because I took care of my grandmother for seven years. And uh, then she died, and I was like, yay, I get a house, right? <laughs> that was the only upside to the whole thing. It's like, house! And, um, <laughs> and uh, but, I, but she had to move into it, and now that she's, she's decided, well, I'm just gonna necessarily, I guess I'm just gonna fuck every dude from Northeast Arkansas I can. And then she did, and she wound up having two more kids. And then uh, now that she's got too many kids, she's moving into a bigger house, and now I get my fucking house back. Woo! Thank you. Yeah! Uh, and uh, now I'm gonna be in this house and everything. We gotta fucking decide what colors will be on the walls and shit, but we have to do it in such a way that we can't really do it. We have to do it to our taste, but also if we're not gonna stay, if, if uh, uh, my lady winds up uh, getting an awesome fucking job, which is very fucking likely, then we're not gonna be living in Arkansas anymore. So I'm gonna, we're gonna have to fucking redo the house and de it and de-dogify it. Uh, so even though we're gonna be living there, if we're not gonna stay there, we gotta be able to resell it. Now, I said all that to say this. One of the reasons why I'm not off, not on the road doing comedy as much anymore is because of all that, and so I had to get a job. <gasps> Fuck yes! Horror! Horror! I haven't had a job in six fucking years. Are you shitting me? A job? I haven't worked since 2008. I'm the reason Blockbuster went under. Are you shitting me? <laughs> every, seriously, every, uh, every job I ever had, that industry has collapsed or has replaced my job with a robot. <laughs> I used to be a DJ. <laughs> There are really no more DJs anymore. There's uh, fucking robots running radio stations now. Okay, fine, DJ's out. So I go into the lucrative business of video stores. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Every fucking video store chain under the sun, this guy has worked for. I worked for an outfit, the first video store I worked for was an outfit called Family Video. Family Video, you would think, would mean, uh, you know, ABC Pax family kind of family, right? Family video, one for the whole, for the whole family. No, 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 this was owned by a bunch of Italians. They were family, <laughs> family video. <laughs> I was just telling somebody the other day, even I remember when I used to have to print out all the late charges on a fucking dot matrix <laughs> printer and then go through and call all these motherfuckers and those of them who didn't answer their phone then I had to fill out arrest warrants for the fucking uh, tapes. Yes, tapes that they didn't bring back. Yeah, the family was fucking serious. <laughs> they will go after your ass if you do if you don't pay what they what you owe to the family to the insulacos. Oh yeah, it's real. If you don't pay what you owe to the insulacos. You either, we're going to come and find you and get your money, or you're going to jail. One of the two. So there was like whole stretches of a week where I was filling out fucking arrest warrants and doing that shit. They went under, 
and then I went to Hollywood Video, and then Hollywood Video got bought by Movie Gallery, so now I've been working for Movie Gallery, and then Movie Gallery fucking collapsed under its own weight, and you know why? It's because fucking Redbox came along and became a robot that fucking decimated <laughs> the entire industry. <sighs> Robots. So I thought, well, I'll go into comedy. There's no way people will get their comedy from a computer. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a podcast. Did I mention I got a podcast? Uh, where do you work now, Mike? Well, I work for the zoo. I'm going to bring them down. <laughs> I'm bringing down zoos now. Because if I work there for more than a year, that fucking industry is going to fucking fail. I can tell you that right now. My track record is anything. If you look at my resume, it looks like a fucking uh, hitman's resume as a corporate assassin. <laughs> Uh, I don't work with the animals unless you consider human beings animals. <laughs> uh, I don't even, uh, I try, I, uh, part of my job every weekend is answering the phone. Because people call the zoo. And mostly people call the zoo to find out when Dollar Day is. When Dollar Day? When's the dollar day up? You know what? If you don't know, we haven't announced it yet. How about that? <laughs> I'm not really concerned about offending you, ma'am, because you will not clearly pay full price for the enjoyment of this fucking zoo. <laughs> All you're really wanting to do is enjoy the zoo at the least amount of fucking possible money you can spend. And that's the kind of person we don't want at the zoo. <laughs> We want you to spend some fucking money at the zoo. My whole job is raising money for the zoo. Yeah. I used to think, well, I really want a job where all I do is just sit around and come up with shit all day. That's all I want to do is just come up with shit and say, do that. Or me come up with shit and say it on stage. I just want to sit around and come, come up with shit. That's all. Fucking nail it. I got it. <laughs> Fundraising. Yeah. All I got to do is just sit around and come up with shit. I don't know. How else can we get money out of these assholes. Hmm. And think and think and think. And that's what I do all day, is think. Not about jokes, but as we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, yellow brick road, where the dogs of society now. Can't put me in your pen now. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole I've been sitting there in the back looking at this fucking backdrop all night wondering, what's the story, man? It's, it's, like, a, it's like the Wizard of Oz fucked up an Ansel Adams picture. What the hell? <laughs> Is it winter there? What's going on? This is not out of the movie. <laughs> I've determined this. <laughs> the trees don't have faces. You don't see a little fucking midget hanging from a branch somewhere in the background. I've looked. I can't see the, I can't see the little suicidal monkey anywhere. God damn it. <laughs> oh, me. Um have a point to all this. I'm, I'm in my mid-40s now. I'm about to turn 44. Uh, about to turn 44. About to get hitched again for the second fucking time. Get that first marriage out of the way like a good Arkansan. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the, uh, the weird thing is, is I, 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 watching the young folks come up and see what they bitch about. Yeah, guys, don't worry. I'm not offended. Fucking leave. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> she was laughing on the way out. She's like, yeah, no, we're, we're done with you. 
the, it, it's fun to me to hear about like what 20 year olds and 30 year olds bitch about because uh, that's that I, I don't want to be one of these old fucking middle-aged comedians that are like yo you young people whippersnappers don't know how good you fucking got it no you fucking know how good you have it <laughs> because you keep getting reminded on Facebook how shitty everything was in the past from from the little memes like Eddie everybody hit like if you remember one of these and it was one of those little fucking sit and spins or something like yeah everybody remembers it go the fuck away we're past that shit now <laughs> or the, the, the same person would be like boy I wish it was I wish I could have be like it was back in the old days. Really? The old days fucking sucked. <laughs> Are you shitting me? If you can get in the DeLorean with Doc Brown and travel back to 1985, are you sh uh, without stock tips? It's fucking useless. <laughs> Are you shitting me? 1985, cell phones were as big as this fucking stool. <laughs> Are you shitting me? No internet. Fucking hot and cold running porn coming in <laughs> through the fucking television if you want it. It's fine. Oh, there are kids like fucking making porns of themselves and sending it to each other on Vine. I've fucking seen them. I've seen them. <laughs> man, oh man. We would have done that shit if we could have. <laughs> It's like, oh, these kids today, they're just horrible kids. No, they're fucking using the tools that we gave them. <laughs> Are you shitting me? They're not horrible. They're not any less horrible than we were back in the day. They're not. They're s the only difference is, is that, uh, that they get to pick and choose who fucking sees their shit sometimes. You know? <laughs> That's all. Are you, and, and, and w w somebody described the the, the 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 state of relationships now or whatever is like uh, uh, is you know it's just so so difficult you know because uh, uh, it's there's 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 sex and then there's not sex and then there's sex and then there's not sex and and, 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 and oh it was it was Josh talking about fucking uh, uh, strip club strippers grinding on you and stuff and now they get you right up to a point and then uh, cut it off and everything and you just give them money and everything that was my whole fucking high school are you shitting me <laughs> that's all my girlfriends did in high school was fucking dry hump and I would give them fucking money and then they would leave <laughs> <laughs> now at least you can do it with snapchat <laughs> Doesn't cost anything. Um, <laughs> thank you, Katrina, for fucking laughing at the Snapchat. <laughs> that snapshot. Was, that was kind, and you didn't have to do that. Um, a group in Arkansas across the river has written a uh, ballot initiative that was approved by the Attorney General, and if they get enough signatures, by the end of this week, then it will be on the ballot in Arkansas to fully legalize marijuana a la Colorado. Woo! I agree. <laughs> I'm very hopeful. But these are stoners they gotta get fucking signatures from. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about this time next Tuesday, they're gonna be like, fuck, were we supposed to like do something, man? <laughs> we got all these clipboards here. What were these clipboards about again? <laughs> I don't know. You can go anywhere with a clipboard. <laughs> You got a clipboard and a pantsuit on? You can get into the fucking Pentagon if you're walking fast enough. <laughs> I was in the military. One of the, one of the ways that we uh, looked busy, we really didn't want to do anything. Was, because we were truck drivers, the whole point of us is like, we don't run, we don't fucking do any of that shit. We drive, we drop off, we pick up, we're done. 
So we really didn't want to do much of anything. It was very, it was really trying to find places, creative places to sleep. And, uh, um, but if uh, somebody really wanted you, all you had to do was right before you left the motor pool, grab a clipboard. What are you grabbing that for? <laughs> because if you're walking from point A to point B and you've got a clipboard and somebody sees you walking at a brisk pace, they're not gonna fucking stop you. <laughs> because they think you're supposed to be doing something. Somebody, you, somebody told you to do something. That's what the, and, and if they do get even more curious, if they even got more curious, they would go, hey, hey, what are you, what are you two doing? And I would always say, we're gonna go make sure. <laughs> I made so much sure. <laughs> Seriously, so much sure, you guys. I was certain by the time it was over. Yeah, I didn't need anything done to it. <laughs> we had to make sure, though, didn't we? It took us five hours of looking at it. In shifts. <laughs> um, so that's another life hack I'm, I, I'm giving up to. <laughs> One of the things about uh, my generation versus y'all's generation, because I'm pretty sure I'm the oldest motherfucker in this room, is uh, we were called Generation X back in the day, right? We were the first generation that they said. Uh, we would never, in our lives, we would never do as well as our parents. We were, I, my generation was that first generation. But, uh, the baby boomers, we would never do as well as the baby boomers. And then the baby boomers became in charge of everything and fucking made sure of it. <laughs> they made fucking sure of it. That's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I have a big beef with baby boomers. I really do. I'm not a big fan of them. They're my parents' generation or whatever, but you know what? They never won a war. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one that they fought in or ones that they fucking started. They've never won a war. Oh, well, they'll beat their chest and tell you how smart they are and shit, but let me tell you something. Here's a clue. When you get my age, you see behind the fucking curtain, Oz. <laughs> you didn't know shit when you were my age. I was a kid looking up to you, thinking that you knew shit because you were a grown-up. Now that I'm a grown-up, I know fucking better. You didn't know jack. <laughs> You're making shit up as you went. Are you shit me? Oh. And you know, my generation is becoming in charge of shit now because movies are getting awesome. Amen. Right? We all had a big round of applause for fucking Guardians of the Galaxy a minute ago. Are you shit? If you if you would have if you would have plucked me from the now and put me even three years ago and said, "Hey, get this shit." Uh, number one, they're gonna make a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And then number two, people are going to be excited about it. And they're going to be like, you're full of shit. That's like saying Jesus came back. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy happened, no, didn't it? It fucking happened, man. We're making movies now. My generation is making movies now. And the nerds, it's the nerds of my generation that are now in power. And, the, and all the fucking nerd dreams that we had when we were kids were fucking making come true. Right? There's no better evidence than that than going down the cereal aisle at the Kroger. <laughs> because it used to be seasonal, and now it's year fucking round, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about a particular cereal that I hold near and dear to my heart because it symbolizes the Generation X generation. And that's called Oops All Berries. Yeah! Strawberries is the is the penultimate dream come true for my generation, and it's the reality that my generation is slowly becoming in charge now. And it's fucking scary because all we want to do is just make awesome cereals and awesome movies, right? 
Uh, and <laughs> that's why we're really, that's why by the time a lot of these baby boomers fucking die off, then marijuana will be legal for everybody because we'll be in charge. <laughs> um, and gay marriage and all that other shit you care about. But, <laughs> but, uh, and there should be hot and cold running fucking abortions in every street corner. Honestly. <laughs> honestly. You should be going, you should be getting abortions like you're going into the fucking dentist. You know, I mean, seriously. That's the way it should be. Don't say Jesus. Seriously, I mean that shit. First of all, babies are overrated. Okay? That's number one. I know you're all hip and trying to have a baby sitting good for fucking you, man. But honestly, I think having a baby at this point in my life would just be the biggest expression of narcissism I could come up with. Because having, having a kid at my age would basically is basically saying, you know what, I give up. I'm gonna have another version of me grow up now and try that again because, because I fucking failed. So I might as well try, succeed. That's all I'm asking you to do, little Mike, is succeed. Little Mike Jr., just succeed, buddy. I don't care what you do, because your daddy's a fucking failure. I'll pay for your school, I'll do whatever. Granddad will fucking, I'm getting an inheritance for when he kicks off, it's gonna be good. All right, we're gonna be set, little guy. Don't you worry, buddy. And you go out there and be the best little shit you can be. Go ahead and crush my dreams, little fucker. Go ahead. I crushed them halfway for you. You finish them off. Yeah, I'm not gonna have a kid. I think about having kids. I think about I think about what uh, you know what I got off. I, don't, I got off track. This is what happens when I'm doing free form. Is I get off track and I forget where I'm at. I'm gonna fucking finish this shit with the oops all berries stuff, and then we're gonna call it a night. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, oops all berries is the penultimate uh, symbol of my generation because there was a kid my age in the early '70s eating his fucking crunch berries because that's when crunch berries first came back. Fucking crunch berries are awesome, right? And you eat well, the way you eat the crunch berries if you guys remember stoners is you eat around the crunch berries first, right? You eat all that hard fucking cutting up your roof of your mouth fucking Captain <laughs> Crunch first, right? You endure that shit like eating glass. And then, <laughs> and then after you get done with that, then all you have left is a bowl full of fucking crunch berries in that sweet ass strawberry milk, yeah. right? That was the fucking, that was the goal that was the fucking dream, right? And one dude or chick, I don't mean to be gender biased, it could be any of them. One little kid from the 70s grew up and he held on or she held on to that dream. And they went, grew up and went to school, went to cereal college, <laughs> learned how to make cereal, got a, got a job with a captain. He's enlisted in the cap, he's part of the captain's crew. He's working for the captain now. And he's, at one point, he's like, hey, you guys, what if we just made it all crunch berries? <laughs> right? And they wouldn't accept it at first. They wouldn't accept it at first. That's a, too radical. <laughs> it's too radical because these fucking baby boomers were in charge of the fucking Captain Crunch. They couldn't adapt to the change. It was too, that's too right. Kids will not eat it. Yes, they fucking will, dude. Yes, they fucking will. Well, all right, all right. We'll test it. We'll only, we'll only release it in a limited fashion, right? Okay, cool. Captain Crunch is all berries. Let's do it. No, 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 no. Wait. About that title. We have to make it look like it was a fucking mistake. <laughs> Oops, like somebody's asleep at the fucking switch at the Crunch Berry factory. And he just falls asleep with the Crunch And then all the boxes fill up with Crunch Berries and don't fill up with that fucking uh, cut up the roof of your mouth fucking hard ass 
Captain Crunch. Bullshit. Shit. Yeah, bullshit. Fucking right, it's bullshit. <laughs> Darn skipping. So they had to call it Oops All Berries. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. And now it's year round, you guys, but they still have to keep the Oops. Here's what I want you to do if you're on Twitter, I want you to tweet Captain Crunch. Hashtag lose the oops. <laughs> Hashtag lose the oops, folks. Please do that for me. Thank you guys very much. I'm Michael Brown. You've got a great audience. I'm at Michael Brown on Twitter. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm, uh, I'm a co-host of Our Daily Outrage, your weekly podcast. Uh, fucking subscribe. I know we have two people that listen in Memphis, and I don't know who you are, but you're probably not here. But if you are, thank you for coming, and everybody... Thank you guys for showing up. Yeah.